get into the obvious here. This is not the junior varsity. They are not a ragtag band of Bedouins running across the desert on camels carrying third-rate weapons used in previous wars. They are sophisticated, educated, intelligent, and ready to die at the drop of a scimitar. In the wake of the Paris bloodbath, the immediate reaction is to lash out and kill every one of them in sight. But seeing what we have seen from decades of these barbarians, what is there to convince us it would have any chance of working? After all, when you kill a nest of cockroaches, all it takes is one to escape, and you have millions again in no time. Let's dig into this and much more with the veteran economist, professor of business at the University of Maryland, and nationally syndicated columnist, read at Newsmax.com, and whose latest effort is entitled, Paris Attacks Should Summon a Western Invasion to Crush ISIS, Peter Morisi. All right, Peter, let's you and I get into this right now. Everything I just pointed out here, you're right in many ways. You've got to go in, you've got to kill the bad guys. But what is there to make us believe that it could succeed looking at generations of failures? Well, did we fail with Germany? Did we fail with Japan? What we did in both cases was pull out the fascist elements in their societies by the roots. We have to not kid ourselves. We're not going to get involved in nation building and what have you over there. But what we can do is take away the means of war. We destroyed the German war making machine first, its factories, and then we rolled across the plains. Likewise, what we need to do is destroy their sources of revenue, destroy their ability to pump oil and so forth and then destroy their armies and destroy their civil institutions. So they have to rebuild from scratch. But let's make no mistake about it. You're not going to turn these people into civilized men and women. They're incapable of it. We've tried for generations, and it hasn't worked. The other alternative is to frankly colonize the place, but I don't think that would work in an era of Twitter and Facebook. All right, devil's advocate. Everything you're pointing out is true. Germany was a sovereign nation. Japan was a sovereign nation. Italy was a sovereign nation. You all had basic social businesses, if you will, governments. These guys are anything like that. All they are is they will basically go any place in any building, anywhere, and they will start using social media. They will start building bombs. They don't own towns. They don't own governments. They don't own any of that. So isn't it then just logical that a standard war, if you bring in the divisions, won't do a darn thing because you're not fighting the same type of war? Well, it, it might not give you the kind of victory you envision. But right now, it's an expanding cancer. And what we can do is degrade it substantially by destroying its means of production and by destroying its armies. That would make it less of a problem. Right now, there are substantial elements of statehood in ISIS. Westerners go there. Muslims who were raised in the West go there, get trained, and come back and commit atrocities. If they were being destroyed, and they saw it on the evening news, and CNN did not sympathize with them while we did it, I think that would have a chilling effect. Right now, they behead us. We don't behead them. The reality is we may have to deal with these not as civilized men and women have dealt with other nation states in victory. We may have to deal with these people as the Romans dealt with their conquests. Ah, wait a minute. I'm going to stop you there. I, I want to stop you there. I got, I got about a minute to go, but you've hit a big point here. You're talking about no longer being civilized. So then does it mean that we have got to become uncivilized in order to get in here? And you got to go in and you got to want to kill them, every single one of them. You put a bullet in their brain, you walk away. People would say that's not the way a civilized society works. So we've got to look at a new way of waging war, yes? Well, in World War II, a lot of the old Brits said we had to fight fair even if the Germans didn't because that's the way they had fought World War I. And the, the knowledgeable heads said, no, when we're dealing with the cancer, we have to deal with it appropriately. And we, we deceived the, the Germans. We did everything we could to knock them out. In this case, we will have to do the same thing. They're not playing by Marcus of Queensbury rules. So if it's brass knuckles and two by fours with nails on the end, then give me a pile of nails and a pile of wood. I think that pretty much says it all. And quite frankly, if you want to read anything else about it, check out Peter's column where he says Paris attacks should summon a Western invasion to crush ISIS. It is available at Newsmax.com. It is syndicated. Make sure that you check out the column. Peter, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show because quite frankly, my friend, I know that there is passion involved in everything that you say. And maybe people need to get a little more passionate about this issue. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Now, another issue involved in here is immigration. There are no easy answers. And quite frankly, too many questions that no one seems willing to even ask about what we do from here, not just in America, but in other countries around the globe as well, in what is a world war. That's next, right here on The Hardline.